welcome to today's video. I am so excited about this. I based this video off of a question that I get probably every single day on Instagram. So many people ask me about tips and tricks for either their first CrossFit competition or just nutrition tips on a CrossFit competition, anything involving CrossFit competitions. So I have documented a couple of competitions before, but over the past couple of years competing in CrossFit, I feel like I am definitely not an expert in competing, but these are just my top 10 tips for competing in a CrossFit competition. And I think that these can apply whether it's your first time doing a CrossFit competition or you just want some extra motivation and some tips and tricks to help you out. So let's just jump right into it because I'm going to try to get through this video as quickly as possible. I know I have a lot of stuff to cover here, but we are just going to start with tip number one. So number one is going to be to know your schedule for the entire day from start to finish. Know your heat times, know how much time you have in between heats, um, if there is an athlete briefing that you need to attend prior to your first heat. So if you guys are seeing this video, my competition will have already ended, but I'm filming this the day before the competition. So as of right now, my heat times are, there's uh, four workouts today. Uh, heat number one is at 9.51 a.m. Number two is 11.35 a.m. Number three is 3.12 p.m. And number four is 4.51 p.m. So I'm basically kind of checking out the schedule to see what time I have to be there for athlete briefing. If you're driving to a competition, you wanna know how much time it takes to drive there, what the traffic is gonna be like at the time that you need to get there. Just kind of like being prepared and on time is always gonna be like the most important thing. Obviously, you don't wanna be late to the competition and forgetting what times your heats are or running out onto the floor without warming up because you didn't know what time your heat was going. Tip number two is going to be to create a checklist. And this is gonna be for everything that you need. Now, over the years, I've learned a couple of staples is <laughs> definitely bring more clothes than you think you need. Like even socks, underwear, bra, shirt, the whole nine, just bring it all. You can never be too over-prepared in my opinion, especially if you're not like close by to something and you don't have enough time to like go to a Walmart or something like that. I've seen some crazy things happen during competition. People have thrown up on themselves. Like after each heat, I always change. So I like to make sure that I have my checklist and we'll go over like foods and stuff that I'm gonna bring. So in my scenario, I have a one day competition with four workouts followed by a weightlifting meet afterwards, which is totally crazy. So this one is kind of hit or miss depending on how advanced you are with competing. So tip number three is going to be to make sure that you know the workouts ahead of time, obviously, which you will, and practice them if you can about like two to three weeks out if you have the workouts at that time frame, and just kind of like get into somewhat of a game plan for what you're gonna be doing the day of the competition. Obviously, sometimes things don't always go as planned and you might not feel as well as you did training for these workouts fresh, you know, like during your training week compared to four workouts in at the end of a really long day competing back to back. So keep that in mind, but it's always good to have some type of strategy because you never just want to be like winging it. Unless of course it's your first competition and you're just there to have fun. It's not really so much about strategizing. I would always suggest that if it's your very first competition, don't really worry about like your placing or how anybody else is doing. It should just be about having fun. And obviously that kind of goes for everyone, but as far as just practicing the workouts. I personally like to do that so I'm not like, what's the workout <laughs> while I'm, you know, on the competition floor. Tip number four is going to be to make sure that you have a well-balanced breakfast that can sustain you a couple hours prior to the competition. Now, I say this with a side note, if you don't typically eat breakfast, and we'll get into this as far as like what you should and shouldn't do on competition day, but if you don't typically eat breakfast, don't change anything the day of competition. But if you do eat breakfast, I would always suggest to have something obviously that's got some balance of protein and carbs, less on the fat side. For me personally, my state staple go-to breakfast for competition day is egg white scramble with oatmeal on the side, some bananas in there, a little bit of blueberries, some peanut butter. Like I just get a nice well-balanced breakfast and I try to eat that like three to maybe four hours to my first heat because I don't want to eat too soon before my very first workout. Tip number five is going to be don't go out the gate for every single workout 
balls to the wall, crazy psycho. A couple of reasons for this is because you don't wanna dump your adrenaline uh, for the very first workout and feel just completely shot for the remainder of the day. I made this mistake during the crush games. I'll never forget this workout. I actually literally thought that I needed the paramedics after this workout. Uh, on the very first workout in the morning at like 6.30 a.m. was a sprint workout on the assault bike followed by sprint runnings with, um, Sprint running, this one. sprint run with sand with a sandbag over your back, and then you had to do like clean and jerks with the sandbag in advance each round, going back to the assault bike or something like that. And I remember that I I don't think I've ever sprinted like that in my entire life, even training for those competition, like the workouts. I never pushed myself to that point. And after that workout, I was like pale and I looked like the life had just been sucked out of me. So going from 100 miles an hour to zero in a really quick time frame is not so great for your body and you just don't wanna do that for every single workout because I guarantee you're gonna feel like crap. With that being said, the adrenaline rush of competition can sometimes push people farther than they are used to. And that's where we have to be careful as far as injuries go, because you don't want to be pushing yourself to a point where it's just not safe for your body to handle. If you you know, can't lift a certain amount of weight, like you know you can't do it, I would just like hold back on something like that. Obviously, you know, like to give you an example, my um, one rep max front squat is 205. If there's a workout where the, the clean and jerks are 225, like that's just not gonna happen. And I can't be going into a competition thinking that I'm gonna clean and jerk 225 when I've never done that in my entire life and try it, risk getting injured, it's just not worth it. So don't let the adrenaline overtake like your logical side of things and just kind of keep track of knowing what you can and can't do. Tip number six, is is to make sure that you're warming up properly between each workout, before each workout, I would suggest probably like 20 minutes at least making sure that you're getting the movements that you're gonna be doing during the workout and just kind of like taking some extra time because just like you don't wanna go from 100 to zero really quickly, you also don't wanna go from zero to 100 really quickly and not be properly warmed up before your events. Number seven is to stay hydrated. And this is especially so if your competition is outside, if it's an all day competition, if you live in the devil's butt like Florida, like I do, it is so hot. And especially in a CrossFit gym in the middle of summer, it's just, you need to drink a lot of water. If you prefer to drink Gatorade or something with electrolytes, you can do that as well. Um, my other personal favorite electrolyte drink with some sugar in it is the greater than coconut water drinks. I was never a fan of coconut water, but I personally just don't like the ovary sugar taste of Gatorade and things like that. So I prefer the greater than drinks and I like the mango flavor and the grape flavor. That being said, make sure that you're not chugging a ton of water as soon as you're done working out. You kind of want to like sip on it slowly. Same thing for Gatorade or anything with electrolytes in it. I have made the mistake of like drowning myself in a huge amount of water after a workout and then I almost threw it right up. <laughs> Tip number eight is my personal favorite and this is food. First thing I have to say about food is do not try anything new or different anything out of the ordinary on game day. Whatever you normally eat pre-workout, stick to that. And this goes for like supplements too. Don't be like trying a new, you know, energy drink or something like that just because they have it there at the competition. Definitely do not do that. Stick to what you know. This is not the time to try anything new. And this is also gonna be like a personal preference too because I've seen girls who can literally eat like beef and rice in between heats. I personally cannot. I stick to things like banana peanut butter sandwiches or peanut butter and jelly. Um, I just will usually eat like bananas. That's my thing during competitions. I just always have a banana in between the workouts is I just am too nervous. It's too hot for me to eat like a full meal. Although tomorrow during the competition, I will be bringing some Trader Joe's like just chicken little strips in a plastic baggie because this is an all day event. I don't want to only eat bananas all day. Typically for a CrossFit competition, like for example, Wadapalooza, my heats were so far apart that I was able to have a meal in between. With this one, not so much, so I'm gonna kinda have to like scale it down and eat like little tiny pieces of chicken, like some fruit, and then the coconut water, just really quick and small.
small, easy digestible thing so that I don't feel sick. So this is kind of a tag along to tip number eight and tip number nine is to not do anything that you don't normally do on competition. I think this is something that a lot of newbies do. They like get new shoes for a competition or they get new wrist wraps or grips or something that they've never tried in training and that's definitely not what you wanna do on competition day. You wanna keep your variables pretty much the exact same. So just like with the food, if you don't typically drink pre-workout, don't drink pre-workout. If you don't drink coffee, definitely don't drink coffee. Just like those kinds of things, you wanna keep everything as consistent as possible so that you're not throwing your body out of whack for a competition. And last but not least, tip number 10 is to have fun. Nobody likes to compete with people that are like party poopers and yelling at the judges and getting all mad and like pissed off. Like that's just not fun. Competitions are literally for fun. Chances are, if you're watching my video, you're not a games competitor. So you're not winning thousands of dollars and this is just a fun freaking workout day. So enjoy it for what it is. Don't like stress yourself out about the placings. Don't be mad at your judge if they no rep you. Just like enjoy it. Competitions are supposed to be super fun, especially if you're doing it with a team. You wanna have fun with your team and don't be like a Debbie Downer. So definitely have fun, enjoy it. Add it to your resume of CrossFit competitions, if you will, and just use it as a learning experience. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my top 10 CrossFit competition tips. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and let me know what your favorite tips are for competing. I am so excited to share with you the competition video after we are done filming and editing it. It's gonna be so fun. So I am off to the store. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, I need to stop the pillows again. Why do I bother putting those pillows there? <laughs> We're not comfortable yet. We're not comfortable. We need a maximum comfort level has to be achieved before we lay down. I'm wearing elephant pajamas, don't judge me.